Hey everybody, Mike here from DIY Aqua Pros. Today we're talking about aquatic photosynthesis, highlighting the light reaction that's responsible for converting light energy into chemical energy, which is used to drive the growth of our aquarium plants. Let's start our discussion. In the aquarium, plants are responsible for performing several actions which are beneficial to the overall water quality and in turn our fish. In order to accomplish nutrient uptake, oxygen production, and carbon fixation, plants first have to harness and convert the energy coming from the light above. This process is called the light-dependent reaction, which happens only during the photo period or the time in which your aquarium lights are on. Plant cells located on the epithelial layer of leaves can contain tens if not a couple hundred small organelles called chloroplasts. They've been determined to be evolutionarily related to cyanobacteria, which is pretty cool. Inside of each chloroplast is yet another structure called the thylakoid. It's another membrane enclosed system that houses all the machinery necessary for the first step in photosynthesis. Let's take a journey closer to the thylakoid membrane where we can get a better understanding of how the light reaction works. Embedded within the membrane of the thylakoid are two distinct photosystems that work simultaneously but with their own agenda. Both photosystem 2 and 1 house chlorophyll A and B molecules whose job it is to harvest and pass light energy to a special reaction center chlorophyll. Now the type of available light here is important. Both chlorophylls absorb light in the blue and red portion of the photosynthetically active range that falls within the visible light spectrum. This photosynthetically active radiation or PAR light spans from about 400 to 700 nanometers and again the chlorophyll found in plants will primarily absorb the blue and red light present in that spectrum. This is why full spectrum and or 6500K bulbs are most common on plants and tanks. Now we'll talk more about PAR and bulb types in another video, so let's get back to the light reaction. Let's start here with photosystem 2 that uses light to excite a pair of electrons that are passed on to an electron transport chain. Water molecules are split into free hydrogen ions and oxygen, effectively replacing those electrons, continuing the cycle and creating the essential proton gradient or proton motive force across the membrane of the thylakoid. Now because the protons on the inside will be in a higher concentration than outside, they will naturally diffuse out, passing through a molecular machine called ATP synthase, which converts ADP into ATP, the energy currency of the cell. Now those electrons that went into the transport chain are passed through the membrane by various carrier proteins ending up at photosystem 1. Light is used here yet again by chlorophyll molecules as a way of re-exciting those electrons so that they can be utilized in reducing NADP plus into NADPH, a compound that plays a vital role in many biosynthetic processes including carbon fixation. At the end of the process, the plant has generated ATP, NADPH, and oxygen all from the power of light energy. The oxygen is released into the environment and is also shuttled down the plant to the roots where it's used to prevent necrosis that would otherwise take place in the anaerobic substrate. NADPH and ATP will be used by the plant in the Calvin cycle where CO2 is converted into sugars which ends up driving cellular respiration and even more ATP generation as well as carbon for assimilation. This will allow the plant to grow and function the way we want in our aquarium. Now optimizing the lighting can be really important in your planted aquarium because without the energy produced as a result of the light reaction, your plants won't be able to assimilate as much carbon and will therefore consume less of the leftover nutrients that cause algae problems. Now of course the other half of the photosynthesis equation is often more crucial in the home aquarium, so next time we'll go over the Calvin cycle in detail and discuss why having available CO2 can be extremely effective in the heavily planted aquarium. Hey, thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to subscribe and check out DIYAquapros.com for more aquarium science and project videos. We'll see you next time.